Um, so my name is Jay Chen, and uh, I work at New York University in Abu Dhabi. Um, I'm actually a faculty there. I run a small lab called the Design Technology Lab, and um, along with my uh, co-director, I guess, uh, Azza Abu Zed. And this is work with our uh, two research assistants uh, who've gone on to better, better things now. Um, so today I'm going to talk about uh, Kodo, uh, which is uh, fundraising with conditional donations. Um, so by now you probably all know what or crowdfunding is. Um, basically, crowdfunding is you know when you go, you have an idea, you go online, and you try to attract a bunch of strangers to contribute money uh, to your idea. Um, so uh, crowdfunding is a huge uh, and rapidly growing market. Um, in 2015, it's uh, tripled essentially to $34 billion uh, donated. Uh, Kickstarter, Indiegogo, Donors Choose. Um, so th these are like the large crowdfunding sites that you may, may have heard of, but there are uh, thousands of different crowdfunding uh, platforms for niche uh, subjects of all, uh, all, all kinds. Um, like you know, charities or uh, artistic projects or um, you know, just social good. Um, so as with most uh, internet businesses, uh, you know, they're, they're trying to innovate and come up with new ways to uh, attract donors, retain donors, uh, get donors to be engaged with uh, the projects and, you know, build communities uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, but mostly uh, the innovation has taken place in terms of um, the business model or the, the donor model. So things like, you know, um, equity-based donations where, you know, if you donate you actually get part of uh, the, the equity of, of what, is, what is produced or lending-based uh, uh, crowdfunding models where you uh, loan something out and then once they start to make a profit, they slowly pay you back. Um, but people haven't really looked at um, you know, what you can do uh, to engage uh, donors in a, in a sort of different uh, way. Um, so today, the way that you know, uh, these crowdfunding sites typically try to engage donors is through kind of, I don't, I don't, I don't want to denigrate them, but they're kind of gimmicky. Um, so you know, like stretch goals, uh, you know, gifts, um, sort of gamification, uh, so these, these things that they add on top of the essential framework as sort of uh, attractive doodads for your attention. Um, and so, you know, as a, as a crowdfunding organizer, um, what you would do is you, you would have to do all this work to, um, you know, set up all, you, you know, your videos, your, your, your stretch goals, and all of these gifts. Um, and it's just, it's a lot of work, right? Um, and as a, as a donor, uh, you're not really that engaged. I mean, I guess, you know, for the first time when you see these things, it's, it's interesting. But then after a while, it just kind of gets old. Um, so, uh, you know, there's probably about 50% of crowdfunding campaigns are actually not successful. Um, and so there's really, you know, room for improvement there uh, on the, uh, on the uh, donor side. Um, so, you know, what can you do besides, you know, add a little Facebook icon at the bottom or, uh, you know, uh, utilize Twitter uh, feeds and things like that uh, to improve engagement? Um, so we were inspired by, you know, things that we saw in offline uh, fundraising uh, mechanisms um, like this uh, ALS Ice Bucket Challenge, which you guys may have uh, probably heard of. Um, but basically, you know, this really sort of uh, this, this picture actually really gets at um, what we're trying to do, right? We want to really engage people and get them interested in uh, some cause. Um, so if you don't know what uh, the Ice Bucket Challenge is, is basically you create a video of you dumping a bucket of ice on your, on your head and then you challenge three friends and uh, you have people donate um, as, they, as they do this or, or not. There are different variants on this. Um, and this, this went viral in 2014, so this was uh, very timely. So um, what, what are conditional donations? Uh, this is kind of a, a little bit of a topic switch, but um, what are conditional donations? Basically, in the conventional donation model, uh, you know, you have somebody um, and they say that I will donate, you know, let's say $100 to some cause, right? Um, and that's, that's what we call a direct donation. You just, you just donate. Uh, you go through all the, the websites, uh, the, the videos, all the incentives, and you, eventually you decide to just donate. Um, so what are conditional donations? Uh, they look more like this, right? Like, I'll donate if, you know, John will donate if May donates. Uh, John will donate $20 if May donates something. And, um, you know, this is not really an immediate action on John's part, but it's conditioned on some events, right? It's a condition on the event that uh, May donates. And so, you know, you can have situations where, let's say, May also comes and says, I will donate $100 if John donates, right? And these things, these events could happen at different times, right? Like the, the, the conditional donation could be affected at different times, and the resolution could, could also be uh, decided at different times. Um, but, you know, given that this, this is the setup, 
you know, clearly if you just take these two uh, conditional donations and you uh, resolve them, uh, you can essentially get $120 donated, uh, and, and that's a good thing. Right, so that's the basic idea of conditional donations. And, um, you know, so, so we had three basic questions that we wanted to answer uh, in, our, in our paper, um, and these are, these are them. Um, so the first one is, uh, what kinds of conditional donations make sense to users, um, and how should these conditions be specified? Um, so, you know, you can come up with all these different kinds of variants on conditional donations that condition on different kinds of events. Like, you know, if I will donate $100, if John donates $100, I will donate $100 if Jack and Jill both donate at least $20, you know, and all different kinds of variants, right? Another interesting one is I'll donate $100 if five people at my company, Tesla, let's say, uh, donate $100 each. So there's, uh, you know, essentially an infinite multitude of these kinds of variations that you can make just by attaching, you know, logical uh, extensions onto them. Um, so, we came up with some of these. I mean, these are the, the general set of the ones that we came up with that seemed reasonable, uh, understandable to us. Uh, and we basically uh, solicited, uh, in, you know, advice from the crowd, and we, we uh, crowdsourced a little micro study to see what people would like to use or what was understandable to people. Um, and this is the uh, summary of the results. Um, basically, uh, in terms of comprehensibility, uh, what we found was that, you know, the things that seem simple are actually simple, right? Um, this is not meant to be conclusive, but, you know, just to get a sense of what's, what's viable and what's, what's uh, reasonable. Um, and then, uh, interestingly, in terms of uh, the usage likelihood, uh, what we found was that, you know, I mean, again, this is not co uh, conclusive, but uh, people tend to prefer to use uh, conditional statements that are uh, targeted at communities or, or individuals that are closer to them, right? So, like, if I have a directed condition at my friends, that's more attractive to me than just saying, yeah, my whole company or my whole city. Uh, and that, that's also kind of uh, intuitive if you, if, you, if you think about it. Um, and uh, in terms of preference uh, against a direct donation, which is, you know, I will donate uh, X amount of money, um, you can see that uh, some of these are, you know, at least as attractive uh, to uh, donors as the direct donation. Okay. Um, so this is uh, what we have on the uh, expression side. Um, so we got a, s a sense of what is uh, clear and what is uh, potentially useful to, uh, to people, uh, to, to, to donors. Um, so the second question uh, that we had was, you know, how and when do we actually resolve uh, a set of conditional donations into actual donations, right? So you can uh, just imagine that on a crowdfunding site, uh, you know, X amount raised, right? That's like one of the first things that you see. Um, so how do you decide what that amount actually is, right? There's this uh, you know, difference between the actual amount that's, that's there and the sort of potential amount that's out there. Um, so uh, there's sort of two parts to that question. The first part is just a simpler uh, question, which is, okay, I've got these conditional statements, um, and they seem to make sense grammatically and, uh, I guess, intuitively to users. How do I actually resolve all the different conditionals, right? How, how do I just, you know, figure out that, you know, 10 people at Tesla have donated and, you know, uh, may donated, and therefore I should now donate uh, based on my conditions. Um, so what we uh, kind of observed was that you can translate these uh, conditional statements um, into uh, a set of linear inequalities. Um, and so the basic idea is that, you know, if you have a statement like, I will donate $20 if May donates, um, then we have X's as the donation amounts and Y's as the uh, essentially indicator variables of whether or not the person is going to donate. And then once you convert all of these, uh, uh, you know, grammatical sort of expressions into these uh, inequalities, you can take this big set of equalities and then inequalities and then you can uh, send them to a solver like Cplex. Uh, so that's what we did. Um, so uh, we came up with a grammar to sort of generalize um, what is actually uh, uh, feasible in terms of like the statements that, that people can make. Um, and then we came up with all the translations for all the things that we, th we found uh, that, were, that were relatively interesting. Um, so this is just a quick uh, table that shows all the different um, uh, translations. Okay, so um, that's basically our, our system. Uh, that's how, you know, we came up with the set of different conditional statements and how we eventually solved uh, these conditions. Um, there's some interesting details uh, as well that I wanted to cover, um, and these are, um, first of all, monotonicity. So you can imagine also that, you know, you can make a statement that says, I will donate $10 only if Fred does not donate, right? That, I mean, there's not really any reason why you couldn't do that. Um, uh, 
Uh, or you can say, I will donate if Fred donates at most $10, or you could say that I will donate if Fred donates exactly $10. So these kinds of uh, statements are actually um, a problem for our system because they're, they cause the system of in, uh, inequalities to be non-monotonic, um, which um, has issues in terms of the time it takes for Cplex to solve uh, potentially a, a large uh, set of uh, inequalities. And also, um, I mean, the first one is just not friendly, right? So we kind of, as a design choice, opted to not support these. Um, you could say that uh, it's a coincidental thing, or you could say that you know we're, we're sort of biased because we want Cplex to be able to run fast. But you know, uh, this is what we ended up doing. Um, so the second question, uh, interesting question, is you know when do we actually resolve? Um, so if you have a statement that's uh, here, uh, I will donate ten dollars if ten users donate. So just ignore the more. Um, this this statement can create ambiguity. So the, the user implicitly may think that there's a more in there. Right, if 10, 10 users are, have already donated when the user has made that statement, I mean, do you say, oh yeah, it's actually already been resolved and you just give me your, your, your donation right now? Or do you say, oh, actually the user means you know, 10 more? Um, so what we ended up deciding to do in our system is we just said, you know what, uh, for now, uh, let's just make Kodo, uh, our system, uh, time oblivious. Um, so we just resolve um, everything immediately after each incoming uh, donation. Um, so this is currently a, a design choice and a, maybe a limitation of, of our work, but you know, worth uh, further investigating. Um, and then finally, uh, what kinds of parameters can Kodo support? So uh, there's an interesting paper called Catalyst at CSCW by uh, you know, Mike Bernstein and his uh, student um, about uh, basically thresholds for, threshold activation thresholds for participation in events. Um, so Kodo, Kodo can actually support things like that. So the, the value that you, the values don't have to be money in Kodo, right? They can be anything. They could be, you could maximize for the Y, uh, the, y sub, uh, the Y sub I's or whatever to figure out, you know, I want the most participation in some event. And, uh, or you can, you know, have a, a, a campaign where you want the most number of miles uh, that, that, are, that are run for, you know, for a runathon or whatever those are called. Um, so you can actually change the different parameters to, to sort of generally support this kind of, of thing. Um, so that's our system. Uh, and then we wanted to, you know, answer the last and I guess the most important question, right? We got this elegant thing, does it actually work? Um, so we actually implemented a front end for uh, Kodo. Uh, it uses the Kodo uh, translators and the solvers. And um, we came up with a full-fledged uh, campaign um, that uh, was basically offering um, veterinary services for kittens uh, on, on our campus uh, because we wanted something, you know, kind of apolitical and also, you know, like who doesn't like kittens? Um, so we thought that it would be a good idea. It turns out kittens are actually very political. Um, you know, people care deeply about kittens or they really hate uh, the idea of giving money to uh, save kittens. Um, very strange. Um, but, you know, this is what we ended up doing. And you can see from um, our interface that uh, our, we, we basically offer the direct donation at the top, and then we also have the conditionals that we decided to um, implement here uh, at the bottom, in the middle. Um, so you can challenge your community, or you can challenge your friends directly. We had the benefit of um, our university uh, network identifiers, so we could, we could do that, but you could imagine doing like uh, Facebook integration and things like that to do the same online. Um, and then uh, the, the, if you've been challenged, then you get an email, and then that email link directs you back to this page, uh, and, and there's a you have been challenged notification at the top right. Um, and then the sort of second interesting thing about this uh, interface is that uh, there's a list of active challenges. So remember when I said that you know, there's a difference between um, what is uh, actually donated and what your potential donation amount is? Well, we thought that this could be an interesting way to um, further increase uh, engagement, right? Like, if you see that you know, your $1 can actually cause you know, this big cascade of like, hundreds of dollars to, to come in, then that might encourage you to donate that, that $1, right? So uh, we played around with the notion of you know, visualizing this uh, as feedback to potential donors. Um, what we ended up coming up with was something uh, relatively simple, but there are some other, other variations uh, in the paper uh, if you uh, take a look at that. Um, so uh, we ran a uh, short study on, on our campus. We have about, at the time, about 700 students and, and, and faculty and staff, uh, and we found uh, that over the, uh, the week, uh, one in three donors made conditional donations. Uh, conditional donors made three times higher donations. This actually um, corroborates pretty well with uh, the, the literature on like, uh, risk. So if other people are also willing to take the risk, you're, you're also uh, more committed to uh, doing the same. Um, and then we also found uh, sort of qualitative results like you know, people said that it increased the sense of interaction or competition. Um, 
And uh, we found that, you know, there are some, understandably, some unresolved conditionals, right? So, you know, uh, by the end of our short study, you know, some conditionals were not uh, yet resolved. And presumably, you know, uh, over time they would be. Um, but maybe there's like a gap there where, uh, you know, I would have donated a little bit um, if I had known that my conditional would have not been satisfied. So maybe there's a trade-off there. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, we have some plans for future work of Kodo, as I mentioned, you know, uh, impact visualization, uh, time-aware semantics, and uh, this breaking of the monotonicity. Um, we're actually working with a couple of uh, larger crowdfunding uh, websites to um, integrate Kodo into their systems to, you know, really get a large-scale evaluation going. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. Um, I've got a backup slide on visualizations. If you're interested, this is what they kind of look like. Uh, people thought they were a little bit complicated, but, you know, I, I think presumably after these things catch on, people will be more open to more interesting visualizations. Um, and uh, that's it for my talk. Um, these are my uh, co-authors, um, and I'd be happy to take questions. Thanks. Paulo Senti at Adobe Research. So I didn't feel like you actually gave us the answer to the question of did conditional donations increase the amount of donation. Yeah. Um, it, you gave us some information surrounding that, but what was your general conclusion? That I, I, I don't think it was conclusive. I mean, like our study was only about a week long, and you know, given the constraints that we had with fundraising on campus, um, you know, it wasn't very conclusive. So that's why we're following up with a larger uh, study. I mean, my, my sense is that yeah, people are going to donate more. I mean, otherwise, you know, why are we doing this? Um, but I don't have any like, um, you know, statistically sure. We have some evidence that, uh, given our our small study, that that, that it, they do. Um, but how about the the Number of unresolved conditionals. Did um, did you know? Was there a, a lot of money being lost because of unresolved conditionals? Um, so if you if you just look at the back of the envelope numbers, like you know, uh, one in three made conditional donations. Conditional donors made three times higher donations. Maybe about fifty percent of the uh, conditional donations were not resolved. You can sort of get a sense of like, yeah, you know, overall you're you're, you're you have a net benefit, um, but but again, not not super conclusive. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks.